back to Chris JRS. Uh, just wanted to go over a few things before we get started. First, I highly suggest you watch the video before actually doing the oil change and then watch it again once you're doing the oil change and you can skip through on parts that you're doing and stop and pause. Uh, second, tools and equipment that you need are linked down below. This tool set is for people who don't wrench much. If you already have tools, feel free to skip that part of the description. Third, go ahead and skip ahead if you know certain sections of the tutorial. Fourth, be cautious and safe. Always double check your work, always. Fifth, and lastly, this is a step-by-step -step video for beginners. So if you're not a beginner, you know, this may seem or take too long, but anyone is welcome to use this knowledge as they need. Uh, you know, skip ahead, you know, certain parts, or if you just need to know how much oil it takes or anything like that, go ahead and use the video, uh, skip ahead. Uh, just don't forget to comment. Uh, if you have any questions, um, if you have any specific, uh, you know, questions, obviously, or if you need me to clarify anything. Without any further ado, let's get going. Okay, first thing you want to do is you want to jack up the car. The jack point on this car, you could jack it from the pinch well and that'd be fine, but you want to leave the jack stands on the pinch weld so where i uh jack it from is the unibody frame which is this right here i put the jack on here well i lift it up so i can leave it on the jack stand right here so that's the point where you're going to want to lift it up from every car is different doing it from the pinch weld is fine but you usually bend it um which is fine as well but i don't like to okay so you're going to want to put the jack stand right here on the pinch weld when you jack up your car, you're going to want to move this to the side and angle a little bit so you can put this at the pinch weld. Lift it up, make sure that it's right in the middle, and bring it down slowly. Now the car's secured on the jack stand. And now we go and do the other side. As you can see, I lifted it right here from the unibody frame. So that way I have plenty of room. Bring my jack stand, lift it up and leave it right in between the pinch ball. And when you bring it down again, you want to do it slowly. And I always leave the jack on the unibody frame, just a little bit of pressure. Just in case one of these fails, this is like our third fail safe. Okay, so for this car, you're gonna wanna use 020. Uh, all 020s are pretty much full synthetic. Uh, I haven't found any kind of 020 that's not full synthetic. Um, I always go recommend using the factory oil filter. You can go with a different one, but the factory one is usually gonna be the best. Um, I can leave links down below to which uh, brands and where you can find different viscosities. Uh, I'll leave that in the link down below in the description. And then you're also going to need one of these to catch the oil as well. All right, we have a 14 millimeter socket on a ratchet. This one's swivel. You don't have to buy one that's swivel. You don't even need. Uh, a ratchet you could just get a 14 millimeter key wrench and that'll work just fine i just like using this one because it's a little faster and you're going to need some oil filter pliers um depending like on if it's a canister like toyota mercedes bmw and uh, some other models you may need a socket or a key to that uh oil filter um canister and i'll do that maybe in another video but for now for your conventional oil filter like that one over there uh, you're just going to need a pair of these. Okay, so this is a 14 millimeter that you're going to need to break loose. This is your oil filter. Again, if you have a 2013 Sentra, 
to 2019 Sentra, excluding the 2017 to 2019 Nismo or SR Turbo. This is where it's gonna be at. Those two are very similar. They're gonna be in the same, very similar spots, but it's not the exact same spots. It also uses a 14 and the same filter, so you can go ahead and apply it to those. But for in this case, specifically what you're looking at is for 13 to 2019 Sentra, okay? So, righty tighty, lefty loosey, so left is loose, right is tight. You're gonna wanna make sure that you have your, your oil bucket. Make sure it's gonna go in about this direction, so don't put it completely directly under. Just know that it's gonna shoot out in that direction, so compensate for that, okay? You wanna give it a little tug. Remember, left is loose, so counterclockwise. Counterclockwise is loose, clockwise is tight. Want to put this somewhere safe where you're not gonna lose it. So as the oil begins to drip, um, if you have a small bucket, you might want to move it as it goes because obviously when you first start out, you have more pressure and it goes out that way, but then it begins to go directly down. So you might want to move it around a little bit so that way it catches it right in the oil bucket and just leave it draining for a little bit. Um, then you can get to the oil filter. If you have a big enough uh, bucket and it's enormous, you can do actually both at the same time. But for now, since ours is probably like a medium sized one, uh, we're going to just do this at first and then we'll go to the oil filter. Now we're going to take off the oil filter. Make sure you adjust it. So you have enough bite force on there. Make sure you grip on it really tight and then righty, tighty, lefty, loosey. So we're going left now to loosen it. Once you break it loose, you can finally do it by hand. Now be careful. As you loosen it, there's gonna be oil that falls out of it. So you, again, you can wear gloves or you can just see how it, there's oil slipping out of it. So. Make sure you adjust your oil bucket, let it fall through. And when it starts dripping, when it's drained enough, you're gonna loosen it all the way. There's still gonna be oil that falls out. It's gonna be very messy, but just hold on to the filter so it doesn't drop. And that's the first thing that I didn't want. Well, these things happen. All right, so this is the part where most people forget or just don't do on their Nissans. You gotta change out this little crush washer. This is what prevents your car from leaking when you do oil changes. You could get away with re reusing it once, but I don't recommend it. Change it out each time. And disclaimer, I don't recommend you taking it off with a razor. You probably will cut yourself if you're not experienced. Find something like some pliers or something or try and work at it with like some dikes or something like that. This is the way I do it. You could do it at your own discretion. Pry up on it just a little bit. And then lefty loosey. Make sure this little part right here, if you can see it, this little part with the little notch on it goes in first and it goes in clockwise. So righty, so we're tightening it. So righty, tighty. 
Okay, you're gonna take your oil filter and take off the plastic. And what I do with all my oil filters, um, some of them you can't do if like they go at this angle. You could do it at this angle if they go in at this angle, but I, you will get spilling. Usually when my filters that go straight up, I prime them before I put them on. Um, it's just something a little extra that I do so that way when at startup, you know, you don't get a dry start. Just fill it up until you get to the top. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to have enough in there. So when you go to start up your car, this thing's not dry and it just gets your oil pressure up a lot faster as well. So it's just better for the car as far as longevity goes. Okay, now it's time to thread on your drain plug and your oil filter. So you're gonna want to do it by hand. Again, we're going righty tighty here, okay? So clockwise. get it on there by hand and then you're gonna switch your wrench ratchet whatever you have to tighten so righty tighty we're going clockwise now here's the important part when you're doing this you don't want to tighten it crazy okay so what I do to prevent myself from tightening it too much is I hold the fill the the, uh, the ratchet from here so that way if I I don't do it too hard you don't want to strip it this drain plug is supposed to last you the life of the car so once you feel some tension don't grab it from down here to tighten it you will over tighten it I grab it from up here and push a little bit medium pressure <laughs> that's it don't go any further than that it's perfectly fine that crush washer once you crush it is gonna prevent from the car uh, from it from leaking so don't worry about it if you didn't tighten it too much I'd rather you under tighten it just a little bit than over tighten it and ruin the drain plug because then you're gonna strip the threads inside of this pan and then you'll have to replace the pan you don't want to do that this thing's made out of aluminum so it's expensive and you can't rethread it so we're gonna put in the oil filter now remember this thing's primed so don't tilt it over or the oil is going to fall out. This is what it looks like. They're all, most of them look like this. So look, this is what you're going to thread it on, okay? And you see your oil filter has some threads in here, see? We're going to go righty tighty, okay? Clockwise, because we're tightening it. And your oil filters, you're always going to want to put them on by hand, okay? You don't want to tighten them with a wrench. It'll even say in the instructions when you buy an oil filter to do it by hand. Okay, so again, we tightened it righty tighty. Okay, just make, going making sure we did that. Um, you're gonna wanna double check and wipe down stuff. I know we dropped the oil filter right here, so I went ahead and cleaned right here. Double check that's tightened just by hand. And then you wanna double check that you tightened your drain plug as well. Yep, make sure it's not loose. Okay, now we can go to the top. All right, so you're just gonna wanna jack it up just a little bit. You gotta bring it down now. And then once you have it just slightly over, push this lever up, come down, make sure you put it very clear from this, because it's gonna come down. Pump the jack one more time, and then left to loose. And that's what brings it down. Every jack, floor jack is going to be different, but you want to bring it down very slowly. And then you do the same to the other side.
Okay, so this is probably something I should have done first. Um, but this is your, gonna be your uh, oil cap. If you try and do this by hand, usually you can't do it. So my trick is I use the oil filter pliers, put it right there and twist it. You're gonna wanna start pouring it now. Just be very careful not to spill. This particular card takes 4.4 quarts. There's five in here. Um, I just pour pretty much all the way up until, well, there should be an indicator right here on how much you have left. So I put to four and I check the dipstick. Make sure you put your cap back on. You're just gonna wanna start the car for about 16 seconds, 15 seconds. Okay, so you're just gonna wanna take out your dipstick, wipe it, put it back in again. Take it out and just check the level. Make sure that it reaches that little dot right there. Okay guys, last part here. Uh, so what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna reset your maintenance light. Uh, the way you do that is using these controls down here. Uh, this is to scroll to the right, this is to scroll to the left. This is obviously enter, it goes down, and then you up and down is your uh, up and down, obviously, uh, where you can scroll up and down. So let's scroll, I don't know if you can see. Let's scroll to the right. Okay, once you hit settings, you scroll down to maintenance, click enter, oil filter, and you just push reset, reset yes, and you're done on there. Um, if you don't have this set up, the way you can set it up is going through the exact steps that you just saw, and instead of clicking reset, okay, you go up here, you click on this, and you can set to, I recommend all my customers to do it every 3,000 miles. But if you can't do 3,000 miles, I recommend you do 5,000. So no, no more than 5,000. Uh, 3,000 is preferable. Um, I'll just leave that there. 3,000 is preferable, but uh, you don't have to do every 3,000. But no more than 5,000. Uh, this is for your 2016 to 2019 Sentra. If you have a 2013 to 2015 Sentra, it will you won't have this display. And some of the 16s through 19s won't have this display either. But if you do have it, go ahead and do that. If not, then uh, you can go ahead and obviously you could skip this. Uh, but I'll put that in the description in the video, and you're done.